to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. The 13th of November 1913 was special. On that day, Rabindranath Tagore or Rabindranath Thakur as he is known in Bengal was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. It was the first Nobel won by a person of Asian origin in any discipline. Even though it was primarily for one of Tagore's best-known works, Gitanjali or Song Offering, in his presentation speech on 10th December, the president of the Nobel Committee took care to mention five other translated works of Tagore, including poems, stories and lectures at Western universities. These were The Gardener, Lyrics of Love and Life, and The Crescent Moon, Glimpses of Bengal Life, and Sadhana, The Realization of Life. The poet William Butler Yeats, who wrote the introduction to the English translation of Gitanjali in 1912, described it as one of supreme culture yet's wrote of the work containing 103 poems which were poetry and prose these verses will not lie in little well printed books upon ladies tables who turn the pages with indolent hands that they may sigh over a life without meaning as the generations pass travelers will hum them on the highway and men rowing upon the rivers Gitanjali has since been translated into every major language and several minor ones of India and the world including Pashto. A poem from the collection Where the Mind is Without Fear and the Head is Held High is frequently invoked in India and around the world as an anthem for dignity and freedom from oppression. Gitanjali was translated by several literary stars. Nobel laureate André Gide translated it into French. Boris Pasternak who wrote Dr Zivago and was forced to decline the Nobel prize by Soviet authorities translated it into Russian as did the writer Ivan Bunin who accepted his Nobel the poet and Nobel winner Juan Ramon Jimenez translated it into Spanish news of the Nobel arrived a month after Tagore returned from a 17 month visit to the United States and Europe Tagore was reportedly at the time on a leisure drive with his son Rathindranath in the Chopahari forest near Bolpur close to where his dream university at Shantiniketan Vishwabharati would shortly take shape a congratulatory cable sent from Sweden to Kolkata was retransmitted here Tagore would have to wait until May 1921 to present a formal acceptance speech in Stockholm In 1913 his award had been accepted and Tagore's acknowledgement by a telegram read out by the local British charge d'affaires or chief of mission during the Nobel banquet at the Grand Hotel in Stockholm In the telegram Tagore had written I beg to convey to the Swedish Academy my grateful appreciation of the breadth of understanding which has brought the distant near and has made a stranger a brother Tagore was already a literary giant in Bengal and a growing name in India at the time of winning the Nobel. He wrote Amar Shonar Bangla, My Golden Bengal, in 1905 to protest against the first partition of Bengal. In 1972, the song would officially become the national anthem of newborn Bangladesh. In 1911, he wrote Janagana Mana. It would be formally declared India's national anthem in January 1950. He is the only person in the world to have two countries adopt his work as national anthems. Tagore's charisma and influence drew many political leaders, among them Mohandas Gandhi. Even with their differences, that bond would remain. Tagore referred to him as Mahatma or Great Soul. Gandhi returned the compliment, calling Tagore Kobi Guru. the guru of poets Tagore would seal his status as an icon when he returned his knighthood awarded by King George V of Britain in the annual honors of 1915 in protest after the Jallianwala Bagh massacre in April 1919 and yet 
Tagore's work would, ironically, find great criticism in Britain, especially in the years after Gitanjali. Part of the problem were the early translations into English, which Tagore insisted on doing himself. Yeats turned into a critic, as did Ezra Pound, an early Tagore sponsor. Graham Greene was savage in his criticism. The poet Philip Larkin used four-letter expletives. Meanwhile, during Tagore's lifetime, India, still British India, would again celebrate a Nobel in 1930. A physics Nobel was awarded to C. V. Raman for his work with the properties of light and the discovery of what came to be called the Raman effect. There would be many more occasions to celebrate over the years. But Tagore's allure continues. Between 1877 and 1941, the years of the publication of his first work, a poem at the age of 15, and his death, he wrote over 2,200 songs, several dozen short stories, half a dozen major dramas, several collections of poems and essays, more than a dozen novels, and textbooks. He brought the education and culture hub of Shantiniketan in Bengal's Birbhum district to the world. A part of the Nobel Prize money, worth about 120,000 rupees at the time, went into boosting Shantiniketan and other institutions. Tagore's Nobel Medal remained a prize too. It was stolen from a museum in Shantiniketan in 2004. In 2009, the Central Bureau of Investigation formally closed the case. The Swedish Academy, which awards the prize, sent a replica. Tagore wasn't unaware of his place. William Radice, a Tagore expert, translated a short poem which he believes reflected this view. How easy it is to mock the sun. The light by which it is caught is its own. <laughs> 